Hi everybody, I'm Miss Kimberly. I am the school outreach librarian at the Algonquin Area Public Library. And today I'm going to talk to you about five of the books on the Blue Stem Award list. And the Blue Stem list is for kids in grades three through five. Um, and there are a lot of really cool titles on the list this year. Today I'm going to talk to you about five of the titles that are nonfiction books. And remember, nonfiction means they are books with facts, so they tell a true story. So the first one I'm going to talk about is actually a nonfiction graphic novel. Um, it's one that's part of the History Comics series. There's a bunch of these and they're all really fun. And this one is about the Great Chicago Fire. Um, and as you know, Chicago is the city closest to us. So there's a little bit of a local history aspect to this one. Now, because this is um, a story about these two kids, these were not two real kids who existed. So it's um, kind of like a, like a fictionalized nonfiction, um, which sounds a little confusing, but there's a lot of facts in here. Um, but the story about the two kids is, is, is made up. So um, when a dangerous fire moves through Chicago for two horrifying days, so imagine that, two full days of the city being on fire, a brother and sister and the puppy left in their care must get through Chicago. They try to stay ahead of the flames sweeping the city while trying to reunite with their parents. So this is a graphic novel. So the whole story is told in pictures with some dialogue. Um, I know that some of you are graphic novel fans. And if you like graphic novels and you like um, nonfiction, this series, and there's a couple other really good uh, nonfiction series, like the I Survived series now has a graphic novel um, portion of it this is a really good choice. So this is a page that I really liked where the winds are picking up and they're having to run away from the fire and they think, oh, we'll just run towards Lake Michigan because we'll be safe in the lake. And they get there and they realize how many other people were in Lake Michigan. Um, and if you've ever been to Chicago now, you'll see almost all the buildings are made out of brick or steel or um, other metals. Um, but back when this fire was going on, almost all of Chicago was actually built out of wood. So when the fire got going, it burned most of the city down very, very quickly. Because as you know, wood burns. So this is a really interesting book and there's a good story. So you will learn something and you will be entertained. All right, our next one, I really enjoyed this one because when I was right about your age, third through fifth grade, my favorite animal was a killer whale. And this is... The Story of Springer. It's by Amanda Abler and illustrated by Levi Hastings. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. Um, this book was by Kate Hannigan and Alex Groudens. Just so I don't forget to shout them out. Um, Amanda Abler and Levi Hastings. And in this beautifully illustrated, and I will show you some illustrations, nonfiction picture book, a team of scientists, scientists in Puget Sound find an orphaned calf who has been separated from her pod. Using sonic identification of pod songs, the scientists are able to identify the pod of the orphaned calf, who they name Springer. Many people, including scientists, community members, and indigenous First Nations representatives, come together to do the work necessary to ensure that Springer can be reunited with her pod in Canada. So there's actually kind of a sad story in the beginning. These um, They notice on the boat that this orca is all by herself, and orcas are almost never all by themselves. They are pod animals. She follows the boat and tries to snuggle with the boat. And when people come out in the little boats, she like rolls over and wants attention. So she's really lonely. They're pretty sure her mom has died. And they start this big operation to rescue her and teach her how to be with other whales while they find her pod. So there's some really great pictures of how they transport her and all the people that loved her and wanted her to succeed. Um, so it's a really, really good story. And if you like whales, um, it, you'll really like this one. Our next book is for the sports fans. This one is called Above the Rim, How Elgin Baylor Changed Basketball. And it is by Jen Bryant and the illustrations are by Frank Morrison. So Elgin Baylor, that's him grew up with a talent for basketball in an era of segregation. And segregation is when black people and white people were not allowed to use like the same bathrooms or drink from the same water fountains or go to the same schools. There were separate hotels for black people. 
um, especially in the South. Um, so that's what segregation means. In 1958, he was the first pick of the Minneapolis Lakers, before they were the Los Angeles Lakers, professional base basketball team, yet he could not stay in certain hotels or eat in certain restaurants due to their whites-only policies. Elgin took a stand against these segregated policies by refusing to play in a town that refused to treat him in, as equal to his white teammates. His courage led to changes in the NBA rules against discrimination from that point forward. So um, Frank Morrison has um, won awards for his illustrations. He is a really wonderful illustrator. Um, and you can see the detail in his drawings. He uses a lot of really beautiful, vivid colors. And this is an important story because people like Elgin Baylor are the people that fought for changes in our country to make it um, more equal and more free for everybody. So this is a great book for sports. It's a great book if you like history. Um, and it has some really beautiful, really beautiful illustrations and a great story. All right, this next one I really, really liked. Um, this one is called Shirley Chisholm is a Verb, and it's written by Veronica Chambers and illustrated by Rochelle Baker. Um, I did not know much about Shirley Chisholm before I read this book, and after I read this book, I was like, she was a super cool lady. So Shirley Chisholm grew up in New York City and decided that she wanted to be more. As a black woman, there was no role model in politics for Shirley, so Shirley became that person. She was the first um, African-American woman to be elected to Congress. She used words, promises, and representation to become not only the first woman to run for president of the United States, but the first African-American to do so as well. See how Shirley Chisholm changed the world with her words and her service to her, to her community. She was such a cool lady. I, I, like, I'm so happy that someone wrote this book. Um, so it talks all about, this is a biography, which means it's a story of someone's life. So it talks all about her childhood, Shirley was a voracious reader. She actually spent some time when she was little living in um, Barbados with her mom's family. So this is her at school in Barbados. And then when she grew up, she decided that um, she wanted to help in her community. So she became um, a nursery school teacher. So she taught daycare and worked with little kids. And a lot of the programs that we have today, like Head Start, which helps three and four girls get ready for kindergarten, free lunches in schools, all those kinds of things. She was really determined to help kids, especially kids who may, whose parents maybe didn't have a lot of money, um, have the same opportunities as everyone else. So Shirley Chisholm is the one that got a lot of those programs started. Um, she ran for Congress and won. She represented Brooklyn in New York City. And as it said, she was the first um, African-American person to run for president. Um, so way before Obama, this lady was trying to get it done. Very, very cool. I really liked this book. She's a super interesting person. Um, and I think that if you read it, you will definitely admire her because she did a lot of really cool stuff in her life. All right, this last one is called Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race, Tulsa Race Massacre. Um, and this one was a Caldecott Honor Book, which means that um, the illustrations were recognized as being like exceptional. So it didn't win the Caldecott Medal, but it got an honor medal, which is still awesome. Um, and it won the Coretta Scott King Award and was a Robert F. Siebert honor book. So this one has won a lot of awards. It's by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. So he's the one that did these gorgeous illustrations. This book takes a careful observance into the most violent act of racism in our country's past in which a group of white people brutally attacked the black community of Oklahoma's Greenwood District. This happened on May 31st and continued through the night to June 1st, 1921 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Despite dozens of people from this predominantly black community losing their lives, hundreds hospitalized and thousands of homes and businesses destroyed, no official investigation transpired for nearly 75 years. So, I thought that this book was really important for a couple of reasons. Number one, I am 36 years old and I just learned about the Tulsa Race Massacre maybe two years ago. Um, I had never heard of it when I was a kid. Uh, so this book talks about a piece of American history that I think everyone should know about because it was a really big deal. Um, there was an entire district of um, wealthy 
like a wealthy black neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the white people that were um, on the other side of the railroad tracks got really tired of seeing how well this black community was doing. And they showed up and they burned it all down. And nobody stopped them. The police helped them. And um, nobody investigated it for 75 years. And there were like 8,000 black families that were left homeless after this happened. So it's important to read even the parts of American history that are like not nice parts. Um, and the illustrations in this book are extremely beautiful. Um, Lloyd Cooper is a very famous illustrator and he's very talented. And you will learn something, which is really important, and it'll make you think about what else might not you know, uh, what else might you not know about American history. So that is the last nonfiction book that I'm going to talk about today. And I hope that you will come to the Algonquin Library and check some of those bad boys out. Um, they're here waiting for you. And you might have some of them in your school library as well. And teachers, if you want any book talks in the classroom, you know where to find me. Thank you.